Alright, here's what's happening. Just got off of school. I got, like, a month-ish break from college, and I want to challenge myself. So, here's what's gonna be happening. I'm gonna be learning a language I know absolutely nothing about, and then I'm gonna be making a game without a game engine with a game library I know absolutely nothing about. And it's gonna probably just be so- it's gonna be easy, definitely. It's gonna be the easiest thing I've ever done. Not gonna regret this decision at all. Alright, so, the language I've decided uh, to use for this challenge is C++. Now, if you don't know, I've only made games in Unity before with C Sharp. And at this moment, I'm very comfortable with C Sharp, and I'm very comfortable with Unity. You know what I'm not comfortable with? The C++, so that's why I chose that language. And also, I'm probably gonna be learning Unreal Engine, so that's- and C++ is used in that, so, you know, there you go. Kill two birds with one stone, I guess. Next, uh, what game library am I going to use? Well, I found this this beautiful thing. It's called Raylib. Wow. Um, in, it's... Um, if you don't know, a game library is basically a collection of functions and stuff that do some of the... And, and also Raylib has its own compiler that comes with it, which is so nice. Anyway, um, essentially it has its own functions that do stuff like draw things on the screen, or generate random numbers, you know, things like that. So anyway, Raylan, it's cool, I'm gonna use it. Now, what's gonna take the longest, by far, about this challenge, is learning C++. So, let's get into it. So far, I have found, um, let me drag it over here so you guys can see, I found this lovely YouTuber by the name of Brocode, and I've been taking his C++ full course 2022 over the past like three days So I want to finish this tutorial do some more code or stuff and then the next step will be actually st um, Starting to create the game It's been quite a while actually because Christmas rolled around around the time I've been doing this whole tutorial And my god, I finally finished it. Um, <laughs> I've been through every single thing that it went over here um, and I I think I got through, it pretty, got through it pretty well and learned quite a lot. Uh, oh shit, that's 800 with 600 height. Yeah, look at that. I can move the window around. It's beautiful. It has a lovely title, that extra space that I accidentally did by accident. And it totally didn't take me two hours to get this fucking working. Hey, you little shit. Yeah, you know what he's been doing? He's been slapping my goddamn computer. Yeah, con yeah like that. Stop. <laughs> Bad kitty. I love you. Okay, we're just gonna... Come here. No, come on. We're gonna pick you up and... Uh, oh, oh, oh. And he's on the... You wanna go out now? Please? Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> um. Now that the cat's gone, maybe I can fucking think straight. I'll tune back in when I'm working on making a game. I have no idea what I want to do yet, but it's going to be simple and shitty. All right, so after some really thorough, intense research, I've decided that I am going to make a game that is similar to Cookie Clicker. Now, if you don't know with Cookie Cl what Cookie Clicker is, don't worry. I don't really know what it is either. All I know is that it involves a cookie on the screen that you click. And I know this because I've seen people in class play it when they're bored. Um, it looks like a more simple game. So basically, I'm going to make Cookie Clicker, but it's going to be called... C get, get ready for it. You, you, are you ready? Color Clicker. Wow. So, the first step, obviously, is to get my cookie on the screen, or my cu color, circle, whatever. So, first, we'll draw a circle to the screen. Alright, so, I have my beautiful, beautiful blue circle here that's being drawn to the center of the screen. Um, and, you know, having a circle is, like, cool and all, but, you know, you know what's really cool? is a circle that you can click. Wow. So let's just make that happen real quickly. And it works. I can click the circle and it will print out eat, so I know the input is working. Now, 
clicking a, a circle's cool and all, but, but you know what's really cool? Is if, if it makes the score increase, like a number increase, and you can see how many times you've clicked it on the screen. So I'll just do that real quick too. Alright, I should be able to click it now. What? I, I ask so little of you. What? What is this? What is this bullcrap you are presenting me with? Ugh. Yes. Yes, oh my god, thank you. Ugh, literally one line of code fixed that, and it took me like 45 minutes to figure out, but it's fine. Yay. So, cool. We have a circle. I can click the circle. The score increases when I click the circle. Now, what I want to do is when you, bless you, cat, when you get to a certain threshold, like 100, I want the color of the circle to change. So I'll just do that real quick. Alrighty, so now the player can click the circle. And once it gets to 100, it will turn green, and then once it gets to 500, it will turn red. And I'm going to be using this to so the player can determine how far they are in the game. Um, which, I'm not sure if it's going to be infinite, if there's going to be an end, we'll just see. Probably infinite. Um, but you also will notice that I made it so the circle does this little kind of, uh, I guess, animation. Not really animation. You click it and it literally, all, all I do is I literally draw a bigger circle of the same color on top of it for like a split second to give the illusion that it's being pressed, but I think it looks it makes it look much better and it's much more um, satisfying to look at. So yeah, what we did today, got circle on the screen, you can click the circle, score changes, when you get to different scores, the circle changes color. I think that's good enough for now, so I'm going to take a break and come back to it later and we'll add some more stuff. Alright, so I'll, I'm back for my break, and I'm pretty happy with ha what I have so far, but I feel like the game needs a little, a little spice. So, here's what I'm gonna do. While the player is playing, randomly, at any time, a little circle can pop up anywhere on the screen. And if the player can click that circle before it disappears, they get a bunch of extra points. And that's the goal. So, uh, yeah, I'll do that. Hey, so, um, future Harrison talking. Uh, if I sped, like, everything up, all the recording of me trying to get this to work to, like, 10,000%, it would be, a t like, uh, an hour <laughs> of this. Not an hour, but it would be long. So, I have some sp sped up clips of me trying to figure this out, and that's what you're because I spent an ungodly amount of time on this and it's uh, I can't explain why it took so long because that would take too long to explain but yeah just know it was pain so all right now I'm gonna show you the exact moment that I fixed a huge issue I was struggling with for probably like in an hour act well, more than an hour a huge issue I was struggling with I'm gonna show you the exact moment that I figured it out just a fair warning this was at around like 2.30 a.m., so I wasn't exactly in a good mood. So here you go. Because how else would it appear on the screen? Because the other thing can't be drawing it. God damn it. Son of a bitch. I hate my life. I, you know, I can't believe... I'm actually... St uh, this is... I, I should have taken a break a long time ago. I can't believe I didn't realize that sooner. That if it's popping up so obviously, it had to be that I was changing the variable because for some reason I was. God's sakes. Why did I have that up there? Why? So, as you can see, I was quite relieved, but also very sad <laughs> because um, it was such a stupid solution and something I hadn't noticed. Now, I could explain everything I just did now, but I think it's funnier if we let. Um, 2.30 a.m. Harrison explain it, so I'll take it away, Harrison. 
what is, um, what have I done, right? I've made it so that, um, the main circle can be whatever, however big I want it to be, and it'll still be able to sense the clicking. I made it so you can rescale the entire screen too, and that won't affect anything either. It'll still register the clicking of the main blue circle, so, uh, you'll see here can't click outside of it. If I click it, wow, look at that. I get points. Now let's say I made the circle something like 59, wait, 69, and then I made this, let's say I put this back at 800 and 600. Even though I changed the size, um, it will, <laughs> I didn't change this. I also can change the side of the temporary circles that pop up, and now they're like almost the same size as the big boy, big boy one. Um, but as you can see, can't click outside of it, click inside of it. And yes, I can change the size of the circles that spawn in. Oh wow, yeah, that is tiny. Anyway, I'm gonna go sleep. Jesus. Alright, I'm back, and I feel better because I slept. Ooh. So, we have. We, we have. It, once it loads. Yeah, alright, we have clickies. Clicky, clicky, make point go up, and then we also have. Oh yeah, I'll just wait for one to pop up. We we also have random clickies, random clickies. Oh yeah, and they can't spawn on here. They can spawn over the score. Do I want to fix that right now? No. So I'm not going to. Maybe I never will. Maybe it's a goddamn feature. All right. Maybe you should shut up. Yeah, that's right. It's a feature. Alrighty, future Harrison talking again. So, we're now on the part where I do the last thing that I want to add to the game, which is finish making the different color levels and then um, making it infinite after that. So how I do it is I um, do uh, the different colors of the rainbow, so each time you reach a different score threshold, the color will change, starting from red all the way to purple, and then after purple, um, special fun thing happens. Anyway, um, and, the, and it goes on infinitely. Now, while I am doing that, while, while I have Her me, past Harrison, working on that in the background, I'm going to explain to you some math. Oh my no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Specifically, the math behind how I'm clicking on the circles that spawn in and even the circle in the middle because I didn't do a great job of explaining that before and I actually think it's quite interesting and it's not that complicated but I think you guys will think it's cool. So, I'm gonna explain it. Here's how I made my own colliders. So, when we're spawning this circle in, we are getting a random point that we're spawning in and we're gonna save- we're saving that point in a variable. So, this is the center. This is where it's spawning the circle in, right? It's drawing around this point here. So we have that. Now what we're also doing is with this line of code here, we are essentially just low, we constantly know where the mouse is at all times on the screen. That is very important. So the line of code that does the magic is this long if statement right here that I'm displaying on the screen. And I'm going to explain step by step what this does. So again, I'm sure there's a more better way to do this. What I'm saying is while the random circle is up, if the mouse, if I click and the mouse is located with on this on this little point here, then we're going to register that I clicked this circle. Now the problem with it is, is this is just clicking on the point. It's not actually, like I would have to click dead center of the circle to register anything. So the first part of the if statement is I'm saying if you click the center or you click anywhere to the right of the center, right? So it can be anywhere to this, it'll register that you click the circle. Now, of course, the problem with this is it's only registering here and here. And we don't want to register out here, we just want to register clicking inside of here. So, how do we do that? So essentially we're saying if you click the center, or greater than the center in this direction, it's going to register the click, and it has to be less than the center plus this length right here, whatever that's called in math, still keep forgetting that. And then if that's true, then it's registering this click, that you click the circle. So then what that does is it gets rid of this. So now what we're registering is clicking inside of here, right? But that's a problem. Now I can only click the circle if I'm clicking in this area. So that's not super useful. So we're going to do the same math we did here, just change it up a little bit. And do the same thing on the y-axis up. 
And then these two combined are going to let us click on this part of the circle. So now what we have is if I click on this top right corner of the circle, then it registers the click. But now the problem is if I click anywhere down here, it's not going to register it. So I essentially do the same math in each different direction all the way around the circle. So now we can register if we're clicking within this circle and it works. And that works the same way for the big circle in the middle. So yeah, pretty simple, but I was pretty happy that I was able to figure that out by myself. Now, one flaw with this, of course, is that um, this is actually what the zone looks like that I'm able to click in. So I'm actually sensing whether or not I'm clicking within this purple square, not within this circle. Because how the math works is it's not, it's linear, meaning it's, I'm using straight lines and vectors to calculate things. So I'm not, I, if I spent longer, I'm sure I could have figured out how to actually calculate just within the circle, but this is a simple game, first game without using a game engine. It's not a big deal. If you click out here, it'll still register, but yeah, it still works great. I'm still happy with it, and that's how that works. Okay, this is, this is it. I finished my game. <laughs> that makes me very happy. Um, there was a lot more I wanted to do, but unfortunately, again, I am in school for game design, so, you know, um, that's coming up and I need to be doing that. But I'm, I learned a lot from this project and I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, and I'm happy I was able to get done, this done in the time that I had. Final products, um, you can, I can customize the, um, Temporary circles that spawn in, their size, the main circle size, won't affect gameplay. Same with the screen width and height, it doesn't matter, so I'm very happy I got that working. Um, yep, it fills up my whole screen right now because I am playing on a 1920 by 1080 monitor right now. So, as you can see, I have these, I can't believe I just missed that one. I have the um, little ones that pop up. You start out, by the way, your score, it changes uh, how many points you get for each one. So my score right now, uh, increases by one every time I click this oh, and these give me 10 but that uh, how much the temporary ones that spawn give you and how much you get from clicking this will go up every time you get to a new color so now I'm here so now I'm getting two each time and I believe I now have these giving me 20 yep and that's gonna keep going up as I keep playing I'll just uh, speed this up and leave you with the uh, gameplay until it gets the crazy rainbow stroke inducing mode and then I'll slow it down and talk a bit more Alrighty, coming up on rainbow stroke mode. Yep, and there it is. And your score will keep going up. And these will still give you a bunch. And you can just go forever, which I don't know why you would want to. This is awful to look at. Escape to close it. Bada bing, bada boom. First game without a game engine using Raylib made, even though I only, <laughs> like the only, <laughs> I, I sh really should have used more like Raylib functions to do things that would have made things easier, like colliders and random number generation, but bam, uh, did it the hard way with a lot of things. Yeah, I'd appreciate it a ton if you gave the video a like and subscribed, because I will definitely be making more videos like this in the future, uh, because as painful as this was, I had a lot of fun doing it, and I look forward to doing other stuff like this again when I have free time. So, thank you for watching. Bye.